And I'm just digressing off into the total deception. Oh, now they've moved it to 12th Street and 15th. Good. Why don't they move it north to Waco? Did you hear that double shooting downtown this weekend? It happened in Waco. Waco, Austin. <laughs> or, no, 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 Dallas. The shooting in downtown Austin happened in Dallas. <laughs> oh, oh, what a country. What a country. Or the only way that police aren't lying is that there was another shooting. But see, now they're going to build right by that, right by the city hall. They're going to build a giant coffin facility so they can charge people maximum amounts for the least amount because that's the trendy thing to do. That's the cool thing to do. I was picking my children up at a uh, camp, an uh, exercise camp, dance camp, and I sat there listening to two women a few weeks ago talk about how great dumpster diving is, and it's the new thing, and for the environment, how they're going to start dumpster diving and taking their children in, and they're just into being poor, into having nothing, into paying everything in taxes. They are into embracing the green police, all of it. Nothing has anything to do with green police. But, but how did I even get into this train of thought? Because there's so much to cover, so much to go over. Oh, yes, the Internet plantation. White House wants Chinese-style ID system for Internet users. And I was talking about how the Foxcom workers actually live in coffin-sized uh, tubes you get in that they then inject you into the wall. In Japan, they have TVs in them and other stuff are a little bit nicer and claustrophobic. But um, this is now going to come here. Pretty soon it'll be, oh, you live in a 200 square foot? My gosh, I live in a 20 square foot. They'd be like, that's nothing. Why, my girlfriend, she's really rich. She lives in a 100. 100 square foot jail cell and you'll go through police checkpoints and biometric ids and this is the new smart city so the big rent seekers they can live up above you you know in their 5,000 square foot penthouses and then and then you will live down in a coffin and you will thank them for it and then if you ever say anything bad about big brother online you won't just be kicked off like they do off facebook if you expose benghazi or if you expose Shalindra Gate, or if you expose NSA, or, or if you have a pro-Second Amendment site, they, they, they kick you off on record because Zuckerberg calls you dumb effers. No, you'll be kicked off the Internet, period. No judge, no jury, three strikes, you're out. That's the official Internet 2 global treaty that got leaked. That's the plan. They're going to try to do it. What's their answer to the dinosaur media dying? What's their answer to the rise of Infowars.com? What's their answer to Congress having the lowest approval rating in history, 6%? Poll, young people, historic low level of trust in government. That's a story out of Business Insider. What's their answer going to be? <coughs> their answer, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be to try to shut us up and shut us down. That's simple. That's their answer. That's where they're going with all this. Well, they're obviously extremists. Obviously, the millennials will start trusting the government again if we just shut off their internet freedom and only let them visit CNN and MSNBC. That'll get the ratings back up, right? Or they can watch entertainment, Jimmy Kimmel, or any other comedy show and see Obama on there every week, or ESPN and see Obama on there every week. This is what they're setting up, ladies and gentlemen. A kleptocracy where the entire social system, the government, the social engineering is designed around protecting the ruling class, living a more wealthy and rich, over-the-top, conspicuous consumption lifestyle. While you live in coffin boxes, paying 90% of what you earn to the ultra-rich through corporate welfare and subsidies, while they lecture you on how you need to pay more taxes, the ultimate form of discrimination. And that's why they bring in the Sterling story and the Clippers, and now they, oh, let's have an all-black league with nothing but black coaches and black folks. Well, that's where it's going anyways. Fine, I don't care. Imagine you tried to have an all-white league again. See, everything flips in the end.
and an all-black league won't be racist. Being white in and of itself will be evil, all because we can point at some big, fat, rich guy who's tax-exempt and gets everything paid for for him, all because he sits there making weird statements because he hates his players. I have to do whatever the government says and accept Obamacare and turn my guns in or I'm a racist. Well, you know what? I reject your political correctness. They say you can't even say the word fiesta now. We don't care if the ultra-rich are basically tax-exempt and mainly make their money off of government welfare, corporate welfare, and government contracts. While those very ultra-rich, Warren Buffett and others, lobby to destroy the middle class and any new wealth who is not basically tax-exempt like they are. How do they keep a population at each other's throats? How do they keep a population unaware of how they're being collectively robbed as they design the society to raise taxes and energy prices to the point of making you poor unless you're part of the ruling class who has special rules and exemptions? How do you balkanize the public so they don't unify around the fact that Obamacare was written by foreign bank-owned insurance companies to double and triple your prices and lower the quality of care and set up death panels and social engineer. You take every racial insensitive comment, you blow it out of proportion, you make people feel inadequate, and you collectively act like what the Clippers owner says is projected onto every white person in America. And you have Spike Lee come out and say, the white players need to speak out. And you have um, famous basketball players, and I've got it here in my stack, come out and say, let's have an all-black league. I thought the all-white leagues were racist. Fine, have it. My whole issue is that's where all this is going, is actually making everyone racist and everyone racially obsessed but the, the, the new systems won't be called racism. The Democrats are organizing their, quote, minority groups into tribal groups, making sure they're, quote, strong culturally, but not really their own culture, a plastic globalist culture <coughs> that is injected in by MTV and by the social engineers. And then meanwhile, you better go along with what we want you to do politically on guns or Obamacare or whatever the case is, or you're racist. And it doesn't matter if it's not connected to any reality. It doesn't matter. Because at the mere threat of being called racist, you say, okay, I'll do what you say. AKA two different universities in Colorado this year and last year said you can't have parties, costume parties at Halloween or any other time where you're a cowboy, where you are a geisha girl, where you're a Native American. I had a listener send me a beautiful Indian headdress. I need to thank him on air. I keep forgetting to do that. And I mean, if I ever wore that on air, would it be racist? If I go eat German food, is it against Germans? And you think I'm joking. This is where it's all going. The Daily Caller uh, has uh, the headline, it's official at Dartmouth, the word fiesta is racist and white people can't use it. The local campus paper reports that Pi Delta Alpha fraternity cannot have fiesta parties. And next, they're not going to be able to have Greek parties as well. Toga parties are obviously to insult Greek people, ladies and gentlemen. Another ridiculous politically correct has broke out at Dartmouth College, America's most hopelessly and disturbingly fragile IV League school. And it goes on to say that they cannot have it, A, because the fraternity there locally only has one Hispanic person that would be going to the party. So to say it's Fiesta style, well, that's it. You got to change the name of Fiesta Texas because white people might be going there. This is to get everybody totally uncomfortable on, on, on eggshells, not worried about all the real discrimination going on by the globalists against us all. That's how they divide and conquer us. And I know you know that, but we've got to get that message out that while the system's trying to get us at each other's throats, the Congress has a 6% approval rating, whether they're black or white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. They work for the globalist. They have been made exempt from insider trading laws. They've been made exempt from social security. 
Did you know Congress is exempt from almost all the laws they pass? They actually put in the bills that they're exempt? That is the, the heart of tyranny. The heart of discrimination. Where the royalty is above the law, Kim Jong-un can do it, but you can't do it as a commoner in North Korea. The fact that Sterling at the Clippers got his building paid.